I'm going to take a couple minutes just to walk you through how to use a really valuable tool that Google provides. And it's really familiar. Everyone knows how you can use Google to search the internet for things, um, which is great usually. But when you're writing a scientific paper, you don't want to find everything in the world that has to do with your topic. You want to only find information that's from what's called primary sources. And these are sci other scientific papers that have been published in journals throughout the world. And so whenever you make a claim in your paper or something like that, like, for instance, if you wanted to say that catecholase will decrease its activity in response to pH, well, you're going to want to find some paper that supports that idea or potentially refutes it. But either way, you want to find out something about pH and your enzyme. And so what you can do in Google is actually type in Google Scholar, actually just search Scholar, and what will come up is a, an application called Google Scholar. And it runs the exact same way as a normal search engine, but now when you type in catecholase, which is the enzyme you're going to be looking at, and we'll type in catecholase pH tolerance, that's kind of a fancy way to ask Google Scholar, uh, how does catecholase, your enzyme, respond to, and another way to say respond to is to tolerate, uh, changes in pH. And so this is a nice search that should yield some important results for you. And again, this is just in Google Scholar. So you see how it says Scholar there. It's just a modified search engine. So when you search, it's going to bring you, uh, you know, you're not going to get articles from the Oregonian or USA Today. You're going to get all primary research. So these are all from journals that are published throughout the country and since the beginning of journals. So it's a really valuable source. So let's say you want to find, you find an article up here um, that is important to you and you think supports the claim that you're trying to make in your paper. Well, if you want to read the article, you just click on it and it'll take you here and you'll see a synopsis somewhere. Um, and you can actually read the abstract right here. And the abstract is going to contain most of the information. So once you read through the abstract, which is just a summary of the paper, then you can decide whether or not this paper actually does support or contribute to the paper you're writing in any way. And if you want to download it, you can click on the PDF here and it'll download it to your computer. But if we go back, I'll show you the, one of the coolest features of Google Scholar is the citation feature. So you notice it says cite under each one of these articles. So if you want to cite this paper, you just click cite. And it gives you three formats already ready to go, done for you. The format that's closest to our requirements is the APA format. So what I would do is right click it, copy it, paste it into your Word document, and then go to your lab manual and modify this slightly to fit our requirements. And so this is very close. Again, APA is going to be your best bet, but this saves you so much time for citations, um, and you'll be able to have them in no time. So hopefully that helps you out.